Good morning. I'm Steve Mullins here at Buffalo Ridge Church, and uh, we're going to have a class today on the significance of our faith and how faith plays such an important part of our lives, especially with things of God, but things of life also. We, we live by faith. We are saved by faith and trusting in what God has done on the cross. And over the next weeks to come, uh, this, this lesson has about 12 parts, and each part has a bunch of uh, letters under it. So it's going to take a while to get through this, depending on how we talk about it. But faith is a, is a, a part of our salvation experience, a part of what the Holy Spirit does for us and in how we live with that faith in this world and how we live with that faith at our church. And it's every day as a Christian, it's intertwined in our heart and soul and how we live, how we interact with others, how we interact with the information that, that we get today from every facet of life, from either news or people at work or whoever we're associated with, faith really, it, it structures us inside of God's plan to give us the ability to give right responses based on what God's Word says. So we're going to look at all those aspects over the next weeks to come, but today we're going to kind of get introduced into this lesson. And this lesson, this part of it that we're starting today is a is going to be uh, around 1 Corinthians chapter 15. We look at those verses here in just a minute. And, and this, this text was, of course, was Paul preaching to these uh, Corinthians. And Paul was about, oh, the, most of the commentary says he's somewhere between 50 and 55 at this time. So relatively young, depending on your point of perspective. But the, the gospel had only been around a few decades. So he's, he's writing a letter. He, at, when he wrote this letter, this apostle, epistle, he was actually in Ephesia. And he wrote this letter back to the Corinthian church as they were having some issues with faith. And he was trying to explain to them what they had once believed and understood. They just really needed to hold on to it. So as we look at this today... We'll see what Paul was writing to these folks and giving them an understanding. And this was, I think he was on his third missionary journey when he wrote this letter. So we have, we have, we've been challenged in life as we live in this world today and the belief systems that people have. Even Christianity has different belief systems. Uh, we look across the, the churches, even in our area, Different ones believe different things far as how you go to church and what do you do and how you're saved and what keeps you saved and all those things. Of course, we want to be grounded in God's Word because we know that's the truth of the Word is His Word. As Preacher Lashley always says, King James Version, uh, Old Schofield Bible in, in 1611, and that's the way we're going to go and that's the way I'm going and and I think most of us here at Buffalo Ridge do that and understand that. So as we, as we work, as we go to, uh, especially our younger generation, are in universities today listening to lectures and professors that are so far off center, to the, to the right or to the left, and in, in our offices today, in corporate settings, in lunchrooms, we have to defend our faith from time to time and we have to understand the basics of, of our faith and understand the basics of all the components of our faith. Now, looking at this lesson, it's almost like a um, school of the Bible lesson, which we taught here some years ago, and maybe we'd like to do that again if we had some interest. First year college material that, that freshmen get get a good understanding and grip on how to teach and how to understand and how to impart it to others. And I think one of the most important things is, is imparting it to others is that we need to get a real good grip on how to impart it and how to impart 
our faith and our, our, our salvation experience in a correct way. It, it, it's what separates Christ from other, other gods or beliefs, if you want to say it that way. And we need to know that, that, that the content of the Bible is reliable. Now, you know, we stand on God's Word. We need to really have faith that God's Word is the truth. God's Word is inspired by God. Now, we could do a whole lesson on the Bible and talk about uh, versions and all those things, but God's Word is breathed and it is, it is God's Word. I mean, what else can you say? And it, that what God's Word says is true. What's true in today's world? When you start talking about truth, and we all look at the media, and, and, I, and a lot of us have even gotten tired of looking at things on the news because of the truth. Is there truth out there? Is there truth today in the, today's world? And you start really thinking about what is true. You know, the one true thing that I know is true that I can always go to every day is God's Word. It is the truth. And we don't, we, need, we don't even have to give it a second thing. But one of the problems is, do we have the faith to take all those truths and use them in our life to, to strengthen us and, and, and give us the ability to be the Christian that we should be and understand how we explain it to others. So we're going to look at that today. And with, let's start in, uh, in uh, like I said, 1 Corinthians chapter 15. We're going to look at verse 1, 2, and 3. And today we're going to just really be talking about verse 1, kind of break it down and what Paul's saying to these folks. Let's have a word of prayer here before we get into God's Word. Lord, we thank you so for your love, and we thank you for your, your faith, your spirit that you give us. Lord, you are the faithful one. You are the true one. And we can trust you, we can lean on you, and know that you're there for us, that you're not against us, you're for us. You're a good God. You're always good. You never change. You never will change. And God, we just love you so for who you are. Lord, help us in this lesson today. Give us some, give us some understanding that we can put in our heart and help us go forward for the cause of Christ. In Jesus' wonderful name, amen. So let's look at uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 and 2. And the Bible says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and within ye stand. Number two, by which also ye are saved. If ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. So we'll stop right there right now and talk about this verse a little bit and break it down a little bit. So we see here that Paul introduced this faith to the church at Corinthia and these people believed and by faith we know we are saved and we know by preaching and hearing we can go to Romans 10:17. it says so then faith coming by hearing and the hearing by the Word of God so God's Word brings on faith we when we when we accept Christ as our Savior, we get so much more than just a salvation. We get, we get the Holy Spirit that dwells in us and enables us to understand God's Word. It enables us to understand and discern and, and know right from wrong and, and use God's Word in a way that we can discern what answer to give to the world what answer to give to our friends and neighbors and co-workers and, and, and all the people that need to hear. We need to go as we go in this world, be ready to give the truth of the Word to whoever we come in contact with. You can get into all kinds of conversations about faith. We can get into deep things. But most of the time, people just need to know the simple truth of salvation. You know, we can, 
we can get into, is this the end time, not the end time? And we can go back to Daniel and Ezekiel and start down all those paths of understanding prophecy and all that. Well, that really gets down in it and thank the Lord for giving us understanding and being able to, to study those things. But really from day to day, we just really need to really have our minds and have a really good working knowledge of the basics of our salvation, the basics of what we believe by faith. And through our salvation and through the Holy Spirit, He has given us that ability to understand those things. So we want to, want to, well, we want to stay that, that, that our faith, is, as Paul said here, these believers back in this New Testament church, you know, salvation was a rather new thing. Just a few decades, 10, 30, 30 years from Christ dying on the cross, and he's talking about faith to these people and the truth of it. So, number one in this lesson, he says, our faith has been preached powerfully. There in verse one. So many years we've all stood under good preaching. Um, originally, before I came down here from West Virginia, we was in a small independent Baptist church in West Virginia for 25 years and heard the truth preached, our family grew there, we grew there, and then by faith I stepped out and moved to Tennessee, and, and by faith God gave me Buffalo Ridge and Pastor Lasley his last 10 years. What a wonderful thing God did for me, and, and I stepped out by faith. I can remember a day sitting on the top of a mountain in West Virginia, reading God's Word, and by faith, he gave me the assurity that everything was going to be okay, that it, he had this, and he was going to work with our move and work with our children and work with all those things in my family by making that move to Tennessee. And, you know, praise the Lord, he took care of everything, took us out of a little church that we thought we'd never find another one like it, and then here we come down here within two months found Buffalo Ridge. What a wonderful thing that God did for me. And, and that's just one small thing that God has done for me. But first of all, we see Paul that he preached his faith. He preached it unto them. He preached it, he's preaching it. Those verses are preaching it to us today that the preaching of God's Word is always rolled into the life of believers and helps us as we hear the, the word preached, it strengthens our faith. Now, we can have faith, we can look at faith in, a, in, a, in all kinds of ways. You know, I have faith that, that, that God saved me, I'll always be saved, and everything He did on the cross, and, 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 we're, and we're going to talk a little bit more about that. But we have faith in our daily living, our faith in Him being able to supply all our needs, I have faith that our church here at Buffalo Ridge is different right now. Here we are online doing these things, and we all want to get back. But I have faith that God's going to give the staff and our new pastor and all of us understanding on what we should do and how should, how should we start our church back and how should we get back to some kind of normal here in our church. We have to have faith that God's going to do that. You know, we can, we can all sit at home and, and uh, as Grandma used to say, well, you're just knitting and wooling on that. You know, we just can't keep doing that. It'll, it'll just wear you out. You've got to get to a point and by faith say, God, you've got this. And you're going to get all that together for us. And you're going to protect my family and my loved ones and my church from this virus that's going around. I mean, that's just another faith that, that we that it all points back to God, but it's something going on in this world that we have faith. And then some of us have lost, there's people out there that have lost their jobs, and, and it's been hard, and those that trusted God as their Savior, living with Him every day, living inside God's Word, and have the faith to get through that, losing your job, Illnesses. We have folks going through some terrible sickness right now in our church, and we need to pray for them. 
And I can take you two or three right now just right off the top and more than that. We can sit here for 30 minutes and pray about people that are sick. But I know by faith that when I pray, my God is hearing me. And by faith, I know that God is going to do the right thing in that situation. We pray God's will in these situations. Now, is God's will always what we want or always what we need? No, not exactly. Is Most of the time it is what we think it should be. But what does God think it should be? That's the question. Do we, do we think all these things up in our heads and think, well, it needs to be this way or that way, and if it don't happen, oh, it's going to be terrible. Well, no. Don't you think that God is directing and causing and allowing, not necessarily causing, but allowing all that's going on today in this world? I mean, we can look at many, many examples in the Bible how God, look, look back at the nation of, the nation of Israel in the Old Testament and all the things that the prophets would come and prophesy. And, and these people had turned to idols and, 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 and God would put them under servitude to another country and they would cry out and God would forgive them and they would come back and serve God for a while and then they would go away from God and it was just a big circle with the nation of Israel. And our country is going through something right now that, that, that I pray that God will let us get by it and we get this country back in some kind of shape that where it used to be. And we can, we're all, that's all on our minds right now. But by faith, I have to trust God. I have to really, and we really do, because we all think, well, how can, what can I do? How can I help? Or what, what can the president do? Or what can the doctors do? Well, it's all up to God. And we have to have the faith that God is going to, God can move men's hearts and minds and not only save people, but he, he uses men's hearts and minds that are unsaved and we know that's the truth by God's Word, too. There's many stories there that he used heathen nations to take down the nation of Israel back in the Old Testament. So by faith, there's a lot of things that we trust and, and, and then we don't trust. And we start questioning and we start wooing and talking and, and thinking. And it just, we, it just gets to our wit's end. It's just we need to lay it in God's lap and by faith trust what God's word says that he's going to take care of those things. Now let's look at let's look at Corinthians 1 Corinthians 1:18 it says for the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishly but unto us which are saved it is the power of God. So there's a crowd out there that have been preached to, that know the truth, but they do not have the faith to, to either understand or want to understand that God has provided salvation to them without having to do anything. You see, the world has confused salvation. So many people think you've got to do something to get it. You've got to act a certain way or be a certain way or go to a certain church or give the amount of money or this or that. That's nothing to do. The Bible doesn't say any of that. The Bible says by faith you are saved in what Jesus Christ did on the cross. Period. And if we accept that, the Holy Spirit will allow us to accept that when the time is right in somebody's heart and their heart is soft enough and has an understanding of what the gospel is and what Christ did for them on the cross, their faith in what you tell them or what God's Word tells them will allow them to reach out and trust Christ for their Savior. Now, that's really the thing about faith is Christ's salvation. But number two... Our faith has been received personally. After we received Christ, our faith is a personal thing. Now, do some people have more faith than other people? I think they do. I think people have an understanding of God's Word. Some, 
some people understand they've been saved, young Christians. They don't, they're not real deep. A lot of us that have been saved for 30, 40, 50 years have a greater understanding of this book and understand the, de the depth of it, but we can't get to the bottom of it. Every time I pick it up to read it, there's always something new there. One verse, one sentence, a couple of words, and you go alliterate those words, and you can say, well, yeah, I didn't know that. And that helps my faith because that just adds another little depth to my understanding of what God is and who He is and what He's about, that He would think on such a small level for me. He would think on such a small detail enough that He says He even takes care of the little birds. Well, it's hard for us to personally wrap our mind around that. I mean, how does He take care of all those birds? You can look out the window and they're all out there gathering bugs and seed, and I'm glad they're out there eating those bugs. My yard and the, the farm is plumb full of grasshoppers and bugs right now. And the turkeys are all there. God's taking care of those birds, eating all those little seeds and bugs. And that just keeps them out of my house right now. So God's good from the top to the bottom, the big and the little. Of course, we've got a lot of big things in this world that need to be fixed. You know, and worrying... Of course, we know God doesn't want us to worry, but talking about it and talking about it and honing in on it and talking about it doesn't fix anything because we have no control over most of that stuff that we wool about. God's got it. And we need to rest our hearts and minds and say, God, take that every day. Go to him and say, I'm not going to worry about that today. Lord, you take that and work with it and solve it if it's your will today. Fix that in our lives. Personally, we think that all these things that have went on, you know, and we, none of us ever thought in today's world would ever be like it is. A year ago, things going so well, things changing for us, but now what a change. And the whole world has been affected. And how are we going to come out of this thing? You know, I was thinking here, I've been talking with some folks. You know, we're about, we're about to reset this church. We can all look at what's happened in the last two, 24 months here. And now this on top of it, the, the world and the virus. We're getting ready to embark on like establishing a New Testament church. And by faith, we're going to step out and do that. I believe God has got something wonderful personally I believe God's got something wonderful ahead for us at Buffalo Ridge. I just believe that, that as this thing gradually goes away or suddenly goes away or whatever way it goes away, we are going to have an opportunity. I, everybody you talk to that goes to church has been trying to go to church. They're going, talking to some old boys up in Kentucky and they're still having the church in their cars and talking to some folks up in Virginia at Duffield, and they're, they're still having church online and some in their cars. Little churches, faithful people, trying to do the right thing. But everybody's got that feeling that this that's going on right now, I really feel that God's getting ready to do something. So by faith, personally, I, I, I have to receive that and understand that and know that that. I have to have, I have mixed feelings all the time, but I have to bounce that back off of God. And, and with my personal faith, it affects my personal life and how I believe and how I live and how I talk to others. In Hebrews chapter 4, verse 2 says, For unto us was the gospel preached as well unto them. Now, who is them? I have to take that verse and say to us is the saved that believes that already has Jesus in your life and to them that don't believe. But the word preached did not profit them. Not being mixed with faith 
in them that had heard it. They didn't have the faith to believe it. They didn't understand what the person was saying to them. It's a real hard thing to walk up to somebody or talk to somebody at lunch or somebody you even know and known for a while and talk to them about their faith or what they believe. We have to be really prayed up and let God do the work. All we have to do is impart the truth. And by faith we need to know the truth. And that's where this lesson is going to go. We're, we're going to start looking at some basic beliefs that, that I think we, a lot of us just think, well, people don't know that. No, they don't. They don't. You'd be surprised. Go knock on a few doors. Talk to people out in the community. Well, I've never heard that talked like that way. Well, I never heard that that way. Well, I didn't know that. Tell me more about that. I mean, that's sort of kind of the stuff you start hearing. Well, are you saved? Yeah, I'm saved. Well, what saves you? Well, uh, you see, the world without faith in their lives and without the Holy Spirit, Spirit doing the work, which we need to pray that God gives us the ability to talk to people and let the Holy Spirit do the work that He needs to do in their life. Give them the Word, give them the truth, hand them a tract, read it with them, and let, let God do the work. Let God do the work. That's faith. Oh, we've heard all these stories about, well, this tract laid in this person's drawer for years, and one day they got it out and read it, and they got saved. Well, who gave them? Who, who gave them that tract? That person may have been already in heaven. But you, don't, you think maybe God looked over to them and said, well, they finally read that track and got saved. I'd like to think that. That's a good thought. But by faith, people get saved. And we have to have the faith that when we give the word and we witness that God's going to take that and use it for the good of his glory and, and for the good of that person to believe personally that they need to be saved. So we, we're going to look later on, we're going to look at the importance of doctrine. We're going to look more into the importance of preaching. We've already talked about how preaching God's Word, hearing God's Word as we hear it, and strengthens our faith. As Paul did in, in uh, First and Second Timothy, to, he called him his son, and uh, most likely he led him to Christ, teaching him how to... What a wonderful, what a wonderful text. To, you want to start a New Testament church, you can go to First and Second Timothy, and it really lays it out. Teaching that young man how to talk to people, how to answer questions, how to deal with problems in the church and in the community. God's got so much rich stuff in His Word. And in our faith, Number three, our faith is being verified previously. We can look at the Bible and look at all the lessons in the Bible. And we can go to Hebrews, the, chap the chapter there on faith, we call it. And it talks about all the, the Gideon and Samson and Saul and Paul and, I mean, or Saul and, uh, and all those people in the Old Testament. It talks about what faith they had. And here's some of the stuff they did. In Hebrews chapter 11, 33 says, Who through faith, now this is through faith, subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions. My, my. I mean, that right there, just look at those three or four things right there. How much more, I mean, have any of us ever had to subdue a kingdom? Have any of us ever had to stop a mouth of a lion? I mean, I drove up beside a lion one time in Africa. It was a powerful thing. We were on a mission trip in, in Africa, and we got to go out one day and drive out into the wild, and the lions were laying in the grass just kind of resting, and we drove right up beside of them to look at that animal that was huge laying there. 
and big and powerful, and, and they stood up, and, and, and they were just an awesome thing to see. And I, I can't imagine being thrown in some kind of den and locked in with some lions, and then God just turns them into kitty cats. Powerful, powerful, just to see one of them. And I'm sure some of you have. They're powerful things. And, and it says through faith these things happened. And it says not only that, through faith, it says quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness was made strong, waxed violent in the fight, turned to fight the armies of the allies, in all, in these all, having obtained good report through faith. Now, I want to have a good report through faith. If we can do just a little bit of that right there, it says in Hebrews. Let's pick out one that we can do there. We can, we can fight a good fight. Now, that's not physically fighting. That may be with words. In today's world, we have the political atmosphere that is, has, has become mean to the point to where you don't even want to listen to it. And people start down those paths. You can quench those fires by being kind and not biting back and use the power of your faith in God and His peaceful wanting you to be peace to calm these things down. Because us being spitting back fire at people, and even though they may be spitting at us, you know, God, through faith, we can obtain victory in all those things. So this faith that we've got in, in, in the... Weeks to come, we're going to be looking at, at Christ and His substitutionary death, the importance of it, and how we can take our faith of things that we... A lot of us have those things grounded, but have we by faith really holding on to God and holding on to God's Word and what it says? I know we, I know we understand that we're saved, and I know we understand that, and by faith we trust Christ. But faith goes so much deeper in our life and out to others. Folks, we need to be hooked up to God and out to others. And, and by faith, out to others. And say what God would want us to say. Lord, I thank you. Thank you for these few minutes, folks. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you so for being there for us. God, we thank you for your love and your salvation. Lord, help us with our faith. Help us to be strong in it in all facets of our life. It's so important that we lean on you every minute of every day and we always use you to be out to others and, and by faith we're going to we're going to be strong in our words, right in our words, and have understanding through your word to give out to others and be peaceable in this world that is raging at this point. Lord, help us. Help our church. Thank you, Lord. Be at the service this morning. In Jesus' name, amen.